the maximum entropy method. Die problem. The expected outcome from rolling a six-paced die is 3.5. What are the probabilities of rolling 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6? We have to find the probabilities. Now, where does this 3.5 come from? It's the average of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. The plausible answers are P1, P2, P3, P4, P5, P6 are all equal to 1 over 6, equal probabilities. Or we have other answers too. P1 and P6 are 0. P2, P3, P4, P5 are 1 fourth each. Or here's another solution. Here's another solution. In fact, we have an infinite number of solutions to the same problem all of which will give you the same expected value of 3.5. But we all know that this is the common sense solution. How do we distinguish between the different solutions? Why is this the common sense solution? The answer lies in the fact that the first solution, all equal probabilities, maximizes the entropy. In other words, it minimizes the prior assumption about the die. This solution, all probabilities equal 1 over 6, pertains to an unbiased die. And the other solutions, the remaining solutions, are for biased dies. And in each case, it depends on uh, what the entropy is. It determines the amount of bias uh, in that solution. So this is the maximum entropy method for our die problem. We have to maximize the entropy H equals negative summation I equals 1 through 6 of PI log PI subject to the constraints that all the probabilities add up to 1, that is summation I equals 1 through 6 PI equals 1, and that the average roll of the die should be 3.5, that is 1 times P1 plus 2 times P2 plus 3 times P3 plus 4 times P4 plus 5 times P5 plus 6 times P6 should be equal to 3.5. Now this is the generic form of the maximum entropy problem. We have n probabilities, Pi, I equals 1 through n, and so the entropy is negative, summation i equals 1 through n, pi log pi, subject to summation i equals 1 through n, pi equals 1, and the last constraint is summation i equals 1 through n, alpha i pi equals a, where the alpha i's were 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 in our previous case, and a was equal to 3.5. Now, they are known constants that are given to us and we have to solve for the i. This is the generic form of the maximum entropy problem. The Lagrangian is Lp mu equals, this is the objective function, negative summation pi log pi, first constraint along with a Lagrange multiplier mu1, and the second constraint with a Lagrange multiplier of mu2. We really don't bother about the signs because mu1 and mu2 correspond to equality constraints. Therefore, they can be either plus or minus. So this is the Lagrangian. And the stationary condition says that the derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to each pi must be equal to 0. Whence, we get negative 1 minus log pi plus mu 1 plus mu 2 alpha i equals 0. Whence, log pi equals negative 1 plus mu 1 plus mu 2 alpha i. Whence, pi equals e to the minus 1 plus mu 1 plus mu 2 alpha i. 
Let's remember this last expression and keep it aside. The beauty of this formulation is, instead of solving for six variables, or in general, n variables, pi, we only have mu1 and mu2 to solve for. And as you will see in the next slide, we only have, ultimately, one expression to solve for, one variable. So this is what we landed up from our previous slide. And this is our first constraint, summation pi equals 1. Using this expression here, we get summation e to the minus 1 plus mu 1 plus mu 2 alpha i equals 1. Whence, e to the negative 1 plus mu 1 times summation e to the mu 2 alpha i equals 1. Or, e to the 1 minus mu 1 equals summation e to the mu 2 alpha i. Let's call this equation 1, and we will be needing it. So this was the equation that we had. And our second constraint is A equals summation alpha i pi. Using the value of pi here, we get A is equal to summation alpha i e to the negative 1 plus mu 1 plus mu 2 alpha i, which is equal to, I take this outside the summation, I get e to the negative 1 plus mu 1 times summation alpha i e to the mu 2 alpha i. Whence, a e to the 1 minus mu 1 equals summation i alpha i e to the mu 2 alpha i. Or, e to the 1 minus mu 1 equals 1 over a summation alpha i e to the mu 2 alpha i. And this is equation 2. We will be needing it. So these are our two expressions, 1 and 2. Let x equals e to the mu 2. Our first expression gives us e to the 1 minus mu 1 equals summation x to the alpha i, where x is e to the mu 2. Likewise, the second expression gives us e to the 1 minus mu 1 equals 1 over a alpha i x to the alpha i. Since the left sides of equations 1 and 2 are equal, the right sides must also be equal. When subtracting one from the other, we get summation x to the alpha i minus 1 over a summation alpha i x to the alpha i equals 0. Combining the summations, we get summation i 1 minus alpha i over a times x to the alpha i equals 0. This is an important expression that we shall be using in uh, our approach. And we also need to remember that x equals e to the power of mu 2. The beauty of this approach is we now have only a single variable x to solve for. So, we have step one of our approach, solve for x and determine mu 2. We use this expression to get the value of x and then mu2 equals log x because we had x equals e to the mu2. That's step one. And how do we solve for x? It's a simple root finding method of the form fx equals zero. In MATLAB, f solve can do it pretty. Now, since we have mu2, we can determine mu1 from mu2. So mu1 is equal to 1 minus log summation e to the mu2 alpha i. Where did we get this expression from? That was from the second expression earlier. 
step three, we've determined pi, each pi from u1 and u2. pi is e to the negative 1 plus mu1 plus mu2 alpha i, where i equals 1 through n. Step four is to determine the entropy h from mu1 and mu2. h equals 1 minus mu1 minus mu2 a. So these are the four steps in our maximum entropy method. Note that if we are not interested in finding out mu1 and mu2, then we can use x that we got from step one right here. And we don't in fact need this expression here. We can replace x here and we get each pi directly from the x's. And likewise, we might not need the value of the final entropy either. However, these four steps are necessary if we need to know the values of the two dual variables and the final value of the entropy from the solution. 